Hey guys, so today I just want to talk about how to care for leather corals. So first I just want to talk about how I care for my leather corals. So my leather corals I care for using moderate lighting and moderate water flow. So I use a LED light by Kessel. What I've done is when I introduce my leathers, I turn the light down to about 20% brightness and then I slowly ramp it up to be about 50 to 60% brightness with my LED light. Of course, if your lights support that level of customization where you can turn them down and then intensify them as time goes on, then I would highly suggest that until you reach a moderate lighting level with your new corals if you get leather corals. Obviously moderate flow because leather corals are tolerant of quite a bit of flow, but they don't like quite as much flow as like an SPS coral would. And then as far as temperatures, leather corals typically like about 77 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, but they will adapt to you know, around like 72 to, to 77 degrees Fahrenheit if they have to. They're very tolerant corals, but 77 to 78 is probably perfect. And then salinity, anywhere between 1.025 and 1.027 is ideal. I've seen people use salinity as low as 1.022 or 1.023. I personally keep my reef about 1.023 to 1.024. It re it's really nice because it helps prevent things like ick from attaching to your fish and things like that when salinity is really low or really high. Obviously, most fish don't tolerate super high salinity. The ocean is, is probably around 1.026 from what most people recommend. And then as far as keeping your water parameters, because you gotta, you gotta remember, keeping a reef tank is, is about keeping water. It's not about keeping the corals or the fish. It's about keeping the water in the aquarium. So the first thing to worry about is nitrates. Anything less than five parts per million is probably best for long-term health. These corals will tolerate much higher nitrates than five parts per million. Uh, they're very sturdy and very hardy corals, but if you can get your nitrates as close to zero as possible, that would be the best. And then phosphates are very similar. Anything less than 0.05 parts per million is gonna be great and ideal. The lower you can keep those phosphates, the better. Using something like Fosgard, for example, will help you keep those really low. And then as far as alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, pH, all of those should be really in balance. As far as pH, around 8 to 8.2 is great. Hardness is anywhere between 8 to 12. And again, you know, the salinity is around 1.023 to 1.025. Temperature, 72 to 78. Lighting, you know, moderate. They can handle high lighting if they have to. And then water flow, of course, moderate as well. But I did want to cover some additional topics with leather corals. So additionally, leather corals, what, what a lot of people don't realize is they can replace an anemone if you have clownfish. And a lot of people have clownfish. Hopefully you have a tank bred clownfish or something like that. So how these leathers replace anemones is leathers like toadstool leathers, where they're these, these giant cup-like leather corals almost. They have these tentacles and, and they're, they have these folds. They really mimic an anemone quite well and clownfish really take to them. Uh, something to keep in mind too, going to the darker spectrum of this is that leather corals actually produce chemicals and toxins that can be really toxic to SPS corals and other corals in the tank. So it's really important to make sure that you change your water regularly around, you know, every week to every two weeks if you keep leather corals just to keep the water parameters in check and make sure there's no toxins or chemicals or things like that. They're not very easy to test for. So you really should try and keep those uh, as low as possible. And of course, the best filtration you can afford is, is really the best. If, if you can put Chemipure Blue in there, go for it. But if all you can afford is, you know, some, some basic carbon or something, you know, whatever works, but obviously the better the filtration, the less you'll have to worry about that. Something to mention too is that toadstool leathers specifically, uh, and just for your reference, you know, I have a toadstool, I have a, a Nephnia, like, like that green finger leather, I have a devil's hand leather. Um, I've had colt corals in the past, which are just a type of leather coral. But toadstool in particular, they'll actually shed. And some leather corals share this this uh, lightness where they shed. And, and the reason they shed is to remove any kind of detritus or any kind of foreign objects or materials. And how they shed is they turn into this shiny, almost slimy stone looking leather where all their polyps are retracted and they shed their outer layer of skin. Uh, and again, that's just to release any kind of detritus or foreign particles. The last thing that, that's probably really important to cover is how to frag these corals. So what I've found in my experience is that leather corals, you can really just kind of hack them up. If they're fingers, you can chop the fingers off. If they're toadstool, you can cut them in the, in the cubes. But what's really important with these corals is most people would rely on frag glue or super glue. What I would really rely on with leather corals is using something like a very small thin needle and thread to either 
put it through a corner of them and, and tie them to the rock physically so they'll bind to like a frag rock. Or you can actually use rubber band and rubber band them down the rock just to make sure it's not too tight. It just needs to be tight enough to hold the leather to the rock. And then that way they can bind to that rock and form a frag. Uh, but that's really all I wanted to cover about leather corals. I mean, as far as water parameters, they're super hardy, super easy to care for. I mean, they'll take just about any light you give them. I will say the higher the light, the more dangerous it is for caring for these animals in the sense of when you acclimate them. And of course, reaching that moderate lighting level is ideal because they'll really handle moderate light well. They'll, they'll handle high light if they have to, and they'll handle low light if they have to. It's just, you have to be careful with high light because it can kill them quickly. And low light can kill them slowly, but obviously isn't great for long-term growth. Other than that, moderate water flow, temperatures between 77 to 78, salinity between 1.025 to 1.027, and nitrates and phosphates as low as possible. And then, you know, a pH of like 8.2, hardness of eight to 12, um, all that should be great for leather corals. And again, you get the added benefit of them almost replacing an anemone if your clownfish take to them. And just keep a watch out for those toxins. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, the shedding is totally normal if you see your leather coral shed. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I really appreciate your view. I just want to thank you guys for watching. And I am active on YouTube again, uh, posting YouTube videos, you know, every other day or, or every couple days at, at worst case scenario. I do have a full-time job other than this here, so uh, I hope to post videos for you guys as often as I can. And I just want to thank you guys for watching, and I really appreciate your view, and I just hope you have a great night.